So I've decided I'm not cool enough to drive this car. No. But you know what? I'm gonna try to learn to be cool. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Jet Fuel Only channel. I'm Daniel, and welcome to the second video of a three-part series, basically, on me receiving this incredible machine, my 2021 Porsche Cayman GT4. Yep, here it is. Happy to say it's here safe in the garage. And in the next two videos, I'm gonna finish out this journey of planning and buying and waiting for this car, and then finally getting to drive this amazing machine. So first of all, I wanna thank everybody for watching my Dream Cars video, and more than anything, I wanna thank you for your comments and your messages where you told me how much you can relate to the things I said in that video, and you shared your stories of Dream Cars and attainable Dream Cars, and that was the most rewarding part of it all. I really loved making that video, and if you haven't seen it, be sure to check out a link here. Also, there'll be one in the description. So that talks about thinking about getting your dream car. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you the experience of choosing and buying my dream car with the third video, driving my attainable dream car for the very first time. Now these videos won't cover all the options or things about this car. We'll get to that because I know some of you don't even know what the GT4 is, but we will get to that. So I've been thinking about a sports car for a couple years now, and of course I had to start whittling down my choices. What would be the best for me? Would I get a sports sedan that was smaller and get rid of the Cadillac, or would I just get a separate sports car? It was a tough decision, and so I joined Facebook groups. I joined the C8 Corvette groups, and thought about that. I joined the Audi TT RS groups, which is an amazing car. You should check it out. Um, and of course, I joined Porsche groups to learn about the GT4 and the Boxster Spider, which is the convertible version of this. And the Porsche was very unlikely, but I still had to see and compare, you know, if I was gonna get something else, you know, where would it stand relative to something like this? So I did lots of financial planning. I ran spreadsheets and looked at them for hours comparing this car to other cars like the Corvette and even the new Cadillac that might come out, trying to decide how much do these cars cost over four to five years, you know, with the loss of value and the payments and all that. And you would be surprised how a GT car like this can hold its value and will be not much more expensive than some of those other cars that are, you know, two thirds the price. So thanks to the detailed planning and the help of my financially smart and beautiful girlfriend, she really helped me decide that this was possible. But not only possible, that it was reasonable. And you have to remember that folks, don't buy a car just because it's possible, you have to make sure it's reasonable. So once we decided that it was gonna be the GT4, I had to go check them out in real life, right? So I visited a dealership and I really wanted to find out about these lightweight bucket seats. Would they be terribly uncomfortable because I know they'd be great for resale value and awesome at the track. And they're great, they're not comfortable, but they're great. So then I went home and like many of us do, we go to the car configurator, right? And we build our car the way we'd want it. Whether we're gonna buy or not, you do that, don't you? You choose all the options, what can I live with? With, what can I live without? What if I put them all in? How much is it gonna cost? And so I did three levels of GT4. I did not max out options ever because if you don't know with Porsche, like this car, you can raise the price by 50% with options alone. So uh, you gotta be careful with Porsche options. So I went through them and of course, a completely stripped down GT4. This car is amazing like that. It wouldn't matter. It's a machine to drive and a stripped down version would be absolutely fine. But I do like my toys. I like luxury. So I tried to fit in a few more things on an already expensive car. Somehow I decided that the high option one was going to be reasonable and that's what I went for. So you finalize your configuration, you send that Porsche configuration number over to the dealer and I made an appointment, went down to visit, filled out a little bit of paperwork, 
put a small deposit down and my order was in. The dealer gave me a printout of a schedule of how things would go and I had a couple weeks to finalize my decisions if there's any changes I wanted to make and of course the very last day I decided you know what I want to make a small change. But it was too late. I'm okay with that. And then a couple weeks later, the car would be finished and a couple weeks after that, it would leave the port of Emden in Germany to cross oceans to come here to the San Francisco Bay Area to be delivered in early December. So that, folks, is where I'm going to let you continue this journey, is the day the ship arrives into port, and then from there, we're gonna take you to the dealership where I actually receive the keys to this beautiful car and get in it for the first time. All right, let's go. So I'm here in the Cadillac on my way to Port Benicia, which is about 45 minutes north of where I live. It's about 20 minutes north of Oakland, California, and maybe about 30 minutes east of San Francisco. Port Benicia seems to be a very popular port for container ships carrying cars. If you look at the satellite imagery, the parking lot is full of white wrapped brand new cars. So that makes a lot of sense why my new car is there. We are driving out there. We're gonna just see what we can see. It's kind of fun. Uh, just a, you know that crazy thought that the car I ordered is on this giant ship. I'm gonna go check it out. All right, let's see here. We're about two minutes away. Nice little town. I've never really been in the town. Just kind of drove through it on the freeway, but wow, actually I'm getting way closer than I expected. There's a Porsche with its, all its white stuff on it. Holy crap. All right. Oh, it looks like, oh, I found the security office. They're not going to let us through there. That's okay. Let's cruise down here for a second and see what's over here. It's kind of cool. Now I'm going under the bridge that we drove in on. change that's good all right let's go take some pictures let's uh, see if we can go anywhere else get a better view of the ship Here I am in front of the Glovis Symphony at Port Venezia. That ship right there either has my GT4 on it or it's already been unloaded and sent to the parking lot to be shipped over to the dealership. I already saw one Boxster all wrapped up so I know they're unloading Porsches. Super excited. This thing left port late October, like the 29th or something. Went all the way across the Atlantic, made some stops, Panama Canal, San Diego, and then last night I saw it coming up the coast, but unfortunately it arrived into the Bay Area at 3 a.m. Little dark to take shots, and yeah, I'd rather sleep than see the boat with my Porsche on it. But in the daytime, it would've been a great shot to see this thing coming through the Golden Gate Bridge or something, right? Anyway, yeah, I can't believe this. So uh, I wish I could go down there a little closer, but they got signs that say uh, no photography and all that stuff. So I uh, just wanted to come out here and enjoy this moment. dealership waiting for them to pull the car out. I'm trying to save a spot because I'm to save this spot. Sorry. See you gotta stop people because we're trying to save this spot. The car the dealership's so overrun with new cars in the lot right now that people are coming to pick up that there's nowhere to put them and we're trying to find a spot. Uh, so I'm literally standing in spot to hold place for this car. Oh I think I see it out there.
I I don't even it's not it did not hit me until now I I just this is Yeah. I'm sitting in my first ever Porsche and this thing is so badass. Oh my God. The sales guy's running a bunch of errands. He's got so much going on right now. So I'm just taking some time with it. Wow. This is all just looking so much better than I expected. So I've decided I'm not cool enough to drive this car. No. But you know what? I'm gonna try to learn to be cool. What do I gotta do? Uh, does this look cool? No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, people. Drive your cars. All right, that's it for now. Be sure to tune in for the next episode where I get to drive this thing for the first time. You know what to do.